Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the greatest wrestling podcast ever. I know we've had a long way hiatus away, but we are back with Bodacious and Manask, and of course, of Adani's Gamer Space, Adani. <laughs> so the host with the most, you already know. Yeah, the hostess with the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, while we were away, there's a ton of new wrestling information that's come out. Lots of news, lots of crazy stuff that's happened. And um... But the biggest news that trumped everything else that happened yesterday <laughs> <laughs> was the release. The most controversial release, I think, so far of the PWI 500. <laughs> the and... IWC is still angry at... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not angry. No, they could the oh, IWC no, could couldn't angry. be angry. <laughs> I think the only thing that most people universally agree on is number one. But everything else, I don't know what the heck they were thinking. <laughs> uh no no no. I wouldn't say universally because um although okay. uh, Hunter, yeah. Hunter, well, and we'll get to it later, but uh yeah, I there are certain fanboys of a certain organization that I like, but uh yeah, yeah I mean, I, well, I, mean, I don't really care for to watch up. Anyway, we're going to do the <laughs> top 25. <laughs> all right, all right, that sounds good. We can do the top 25. Break it down, I'll do, we'll do five at a time and discuss whether you names that are on that list and whether you agree with their position before moving on to the next set. All right, that sounds good. That, that's good. I can, or I can. do you want to just go through all twenty five and then go back there? No, I don't want to talk about all twenty five at one time. That doesn't that that's okay. gonna get that's gonna get real uh real jump. No, I meant oh, like go go from twenty. Yeah, we'll I do feel five like at time. like yeah. do it in maybe blocks or something, or just yeah, go from twenty five to one. Yeah, we can do. Let's start with number twenty five. Yeah, let's then. do twenty five. Yeah, twenty five to twenty one. Twenty five to twenty one. Number twenty five, AC Mac. Number 24, oh. Alexander. <laughs> Number 23, Jay White. <laughs> Number 22, Chris Jericho. Okay, all right. And number 21, Moose. Okay. Now, I already got a problem with two names. Why the heck is Jay White and Chris Jericho under 20? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, those were like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, is this, also, is this, is, hold on, does this include women or no? Is it just men? No, no, there's going to, there's a, there's going to be like two other lists. There's one that's for yeah, tag team and another one for women. Okay, like, okay, as long as, okay, as long as that's the case, then yeah, I can see Chris Jericho definitely top 20 for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he's always been a major face and helped carry the company. Mm -hmm. And the grading period is from July 1st, 2021 until June 30th. Of this year, 2022. Mm -hmm. So, why the heck is Jericho on the below? Why is Jay White, who was freaking champion, below well, 20? I mean, he was only the champion for a little while there. He got thrown the championship right before Forbidden Door. Right, but he was also he was doing New Japan. He was showing up in AW, and he was showing up in Impact Wrestling. So. He would, he should be higher than twenty. I don't uh, know. I feel like um, Impact and Impact Wrestling wasn't that great as compared to like uh, Kenny Omega. Even though I I like to you know jock on or ride on Kenny Omega a little bit, like he, he did big things when he was doing his belt collector thing the year before last. So uh, uh, Jay White didn't necessarily do that. Uh, he, not that he didn't do anything big. I, I'm a fan, but. Uh, 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 I think Jay White. I would. I'm, I'm taking your side here. I agree that he should be top twenty. Uh, or twenty. I mean, <laughs> but I'm just saying his 20. impact in quote unquote impact wrestling wasn't that uh, uh, great. <laughs> yeah. But it's really hard to be great. I don't know if it's their their writing or what. But I don't mean to chop all that up. But I did want to add in. I didn't know who AC Mack was, but I, I'm sitting here looking at his stuff on YouTube like right now as we're going over this and. I had no idea that he was the first openly gay male world champion. Who knew? I didn't know that. Huh. Is he MLW? Uh, 
IWTV. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And then, okay, and my other thing is, why is Moose over both Jericho and Jay White? Yeah. Um, did somebody get paid? Are there, were, were, were pockets uh, added? <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring me's want to know these things. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. Right. I don't know. How, how do they? Do, do you know, do you know what this? You know, like specific. Like like how do they? It's, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, wins uh, and losses and whoa 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 well, one at a time. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, they, they have a rating that they go with as far as the the um. The aerials and what the what the match looks like and how it feels and if anything was botched, anything looked wrong. But then also there's uh, the gate. How much did you personally, if your name was on the sign, how many people showed up at the door? Like they factored those kinds of things in. Gotcha. Okay. okay. In the interview, they were saying they the most heavily heavy thing is uh, the number of matches you had to you had to wrestle at least thirty matches in that time period. Okay. So okay. this the number of matches, the quality of the matches. And your win, your number of wins, your win winning percentage. Which so we'll explain why number one is number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like, has is, is that, I would love is that to a viable? To the, is, we'll I want to we'll see if to that's verifiable. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna look at the 2002 list. Shawn Michaels is on that list. They're full of it. <laughs> he did not wrestle 30 matches in 2002. <laughs> well. Not just him. There's some people further up that we're going to question that with. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we we there will be yeah. definitely question marks, but we'll come to it. We'll come to it when we get uh-huh. there. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get there. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do the next five. Yeah, that's twenty good. through sixteen. Yeah. So number twenty. Drew McIntyre. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm for number it. Number nineteen. Number nineteen was last year's number one, Kenny Omega. Okay. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Has he wrestled 30 Number matches? 18. Yes. Okay, all right. I'll get it. So, with Kenny Omega, he was still champion. He was still multiple champion of AEW and Impact during the, that grading period. That's so, he was point. still champion up to that five months. But then he was out injured for the remainder okay. eight months. Or no, but not while eight he was then. still champion up to like all out last year, he was wrestling on Impact, he was wrestling on All Elite Wrestling shows, and he was wrestling on uh, New Japan shows. Like he was everywhere. Okay, I mean that's, that's yeah, that's fair. I just didn't know when he when he cons- when he got in when he went out for his injury. I think is was the question. He went out right after um, what November. Do you call it? Uh, yeah, November the uh, full gear. So, so July, full gear. He dropped the title and then he August. was out. July, August, September, October, November. Yeah, so he, so in November uh, that would have been five months. So he was, he was. So he was out December, January, February, was out March, 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 May, the seven months of the of the grading period. <laughs> You're right. Keep right. that in mind. Okay. Keep that in mind now. Can I talk to somebody else later on? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm with number you. eight. Probably... Number eighteen, Adam Cole. Okay. Kind of surprising. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that he... He still helped. He was, he was doing NXT at that time and AEW. And then uh, number 17, Seth Rollins. Okay. I have a problem with him being 17. I'm going to say why. I'll admit. And number do you 16, think he should be MVP. higher? Or do you think he should be yeah. lower? No, Seth Rollins should be higher. Okay. He be higher. But I'm going to say why later on when we get to somebody else who is much higher and I think Seth Rollins should either be up there with them <laughs> or okay, that's that's fair. Uh, you got one more name right? he, he MJF no it was uh, MJF. 20 through 16 MJF it was 16 yeah so, alright uh, so to me uh, Adam Cole was on the tail end and he was kind of hurt and run down a little bit and needed some time off really uh, at the end of his NXT run and that was this time period and then you go into his AEW, and he's been hurt for a little bit here. So what what you what you really got was a couple months worth of him hanging out in the back doing BTE, 
pretty much what he would have done on the main roster in WWE before Vince McMahon and everything happened. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> honestly. So uh, Seth Rollins was he injured at all last during this time last year, or was he not on TV? No, I th- he was doing. Wasn't he doing his feud with Edge? The big thing is that some people did not care for what I call his um, Batman villain character that he did this past year. Joker. Some people Joker. Just want to Which, you, know, you can say the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't feel like it is just the Joker though, because it's all it's it's also uh, a little bit the Riddler. A little, he's got like a whole bunch of different things, like twirling the thing from like uh, uh, Jim Carrey, and like I, I swear he just picked up on all these different like. Uh, a '90s Batman villain uh, cliche days. Just to be just, uh, just to be clear, Jim Carrey's Riddler was literally every other Jim Carrey character ever. <laughs> I, uh, no, I don't, I don't feel like that's the case. Uh, say, I, 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 I'm, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people that believe Jim Carrey just plays himself in every role. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel yeah, like that. No. Go back and look at In Living Color. Like, uh, he, 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 he was, he's really good. Yeah, I, watch I watched In Living Color. I wasn't talking watch about... Once Bitten. I haven't seen that. I'll check that out. And, uh, That's what about the, the number 23? <laughs> Have you seen the number 23? Yes, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. obviously the you serious the roles are that? different. But, but yes, I've seen the number 23. It's crazy. Yeah, it's back to wrestling. Yeah, yeah back to wrestling. <laughs> but uh, we, are, we are nuanced here on the time. greatest wrestling podcast. Hit the subscribe <laughs> button. Yeah, hit the <laughs> like button. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Definitely. But I'm not going to argue against MJS. 16 is still top 20, and there's a lot of people ahead of him but right it, now. But he did put in some bangers. So. 18 is the spot where you could have put a Chris Jericho or a Jay White. Yeah. Or. or both J.Y. and Chris Jericho up there. Well, there's another guy that I would have moved, even though I feel like he had a really good story this year. There, There's someone more maneuvering a little higher up. Yeah. Okay. 15 through 11 is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Number 15. Number 14 is Josh Alexander. Number 13 is Matt Cardona. Now, Matt Cardona... Bell collector in the indie scene, so like, why is he only thirteen? I think he should. I think Matt Cardona earned himself top ten, at least number ten. I mean, it I might not be GCW. I look, I look at this like I look at um, the MVP for the um, Super Bowl, right? Or I mean, for the um, league of the uh, football. He got hurt. That's he's, true. He didn't he's, get hurt. I, or he should be, or maybe a little higher up. And I love Matt Cardona. I think the dude yeah. is really a lot better than WWE ever, ever gave him credit for, and he's proven it. Uh, I think he's getting a lot of um, poo-poo from veterans that uh, did the hardcore scene because they're not watch- either watching his matches and only have an opinion based on what they saw in WWE and maybe how he used to be. But I'm telling you what, the guy has changed, and you could tell by the way that he's really putting it out there in the ring. And now, number 12 is the reason I have a problem with the whole list. The reason this guy is yeah. 12 and not in the top 10, John Moxley. And they were tra- they even tried saying it was because he was out for three months during the grading period. But yes, but the other nine months he was there, he had stellar matches. And that's when he started doing GCW as well. And all and like these really great matches for nine months. Yeah. Somebody in the top ten who's been out that, for longer I than three like, months. Uh, <laughs> the reason that he went out... It wasn't a uh, in-ring injury, right? And so I feel like that shouldn't be counted against him. And even though I just said the twelve even the I match that he had for nine months. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. But uh, the quality of his uh, matches and uh, when when was the end of uh, June thirtieth. June thirtieth. It was the end. The Moxley stuff that he's been doing to lead up to All In, where he was the champion and all that, was not counted for this, right? 
Um, it's so hard. My thing froze. It's oh. hard. It's hard for me to tell what the time frame is. I, I I'm my screen is if, clear. If is it's good. Right, if it's like a if it's at Forbidden Door or like a week later, you're pr- pretty much not having Moxley as the interim champion in any of the discussion for it. And if if you're looking at that. It's after, after Forbidden Door. Something it's Forbidden Door was in a dream set when he came back in yeah, so, uh, for interim champion. Yeah, it, no, the, that, the wheels went again. Yeah, that would have been after. That would have been after the grading period. But with that said, the, the match that he had at Forbidden Door was awesome. No, actually, and, he was already interim champion, wasn't he? At Forbidden Door? Or that was the final... That was the fina- the final match for the interim champion at Forbidden Door, which was still in the grading period. So he even became champion like, during that period. I don't know, but because uh, for- so Forbidden Door was June twenty fourth. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the undercard guys to bring him up, and to have the Blackpool um, Combat uh, Club, to have all those things yeah, go. They formed for the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, he won the GCW championship during that time period. He had a rivalry with Daniel Bryan, or uh, <laughs> Brian Danielson that yeah. we'll talk about uh, later. Because I feel like the the whole point for him would be the same points for Moxley, but he's at 12. And Danielson yeah. had a time period off as well. Uh, the Danielson number six did as well. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> uh, number eleven is Shingo anyway, Takagi. Yeah, Shingo Takagi. Am I missing something? What? I don't know who that is. I don't know. Yeah. I, you're you're speaking a lot of people. I don't know. I, I followed the mainstream um, wrestling in America, and that's that's unfortunately is about as far as I go. So you're speaking. Hey. You're speaking a lot of. Uh, of uh, so I, names that so, I don't know. <laughs> of those names, I feel like both John Moxley and Matt Cardona, in my opinion, should be in the top ten. And, and now we're about to say the next five in the top ten, and you're going to hear two names they could have easily replaced. Number ten, Jonathan Gresham. Okay. Number nine, Big E. Number eight, El Hijo Del. Number seven, Brian Danielson, and number six, Cody Rhodes. Now, how in the world is Cody Rhodes number six when he's been out a lot? Like, he, it was like a three-month layover between him going from AEW to WWE, and then even when he was in AEW, he was out due to that storyline injury from Alice, uh, Malachi Black. I was like, Aleister Black. And it was during this time period that he tore his pec in the match and still put on that match with Seth Rollins. Yeah, that was, was, that was June. Him. Yeah, so Hell in a Cell, Hell in a Cell was June. So that would have been the I very really end. Like right. to know. I would really like to know. And as a matter of fact, I want to look it up right fast. What did he place last year? Because if he placed low last year, considering that he had a really good run the year before. I think he was top 10 last year. But... Yeah, I have a problem with him being number six with all the time off he's had. When the excuse for some of the other people was they had like three months away or some time away, yeah. and like, so is Kobe. But that didn't stop him from being number six. Well, and, yes, he had some great matches. And, and w- with that said, how is you know his great matches were against Seth Rollins? How is Seth Rollins seventeen? I know, and that's why I have a problem with <laughs> Seth Rollins being number seventeen and Cody Rhodes being number six. Like they just kind of go hand in hand together. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rollins. Seth, oh, he was a left Seth, last year. Seth Rollins didn't hasn't taken any time off and just put on, you know, a four to five star match. We you know, back to back to back to back every, every you know every pay per view. Like I just I'm 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 okay with the seventeen like like placing. I'm not. He should at least be fifteen or higher. He, yeah. If you I'm, go back like fifteen through eleven, this episode of. The greatest wrestling podcast. You hated Seth Rollins. Yes, I think this is. I still don't like Seth Rollins, but I rec- I recognize that he's a talented wrestler and he puts on great matches and yeah. he deserves to be higher. 
than 15, and, and he's only 17. And I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I hate to say this, but I'm, I I know for a fact, we just we just went through, we just did 10 through 6, right? Or 10 through, yeah, 10, th- 10 through 6, or 11 yeah, through 6? Yeah, 10 through 6. Yeah, yeah. How, how is AJ Styles not in the top twenty-five? He hadn't had a lot of matches. Yeah, no. he did a tag team, and I mean he's coming back. He had, and he, wins he, matter. He that was the thing. They're in a, at a run with the fifty-fifty booking that hurts them. If he's been doing tag teams during that period, and they wouldn't be a, a separate list for tag team. Well, I mean, he was. He was tag teaming with Dolph Ziggler, but that was only like th- two or three weeks. Like, I don't know. When I'm thinking back, I don't really remember much of AJ from this past year, to be honest. I completely mean, forgot that. <laughs> you, you forgot about AJ Styles? Come on. <laughs> Why is Jonathan Gresham number 10, first of all? Yes, he won the ring of honor championship at the end of ring of honor but he hadn't done enough across the board to be number 10 (laughs) yeah i mean if you're gonna put him at 10 and his body of work is a lot of uh um wow i can't remember his name now um uh uh that's what I'm saying. What has he done that's better than Moxley? That was better than shoot Matt Cardona. That was better than Seth Rollins. That was better than Chris Jericho. That was better than Jay White. That was better than Jay than MJF. One of those opponents in the top 133 right here. I mean, I'm I'm searching for somebody that he wrestled. Um. <laughs> Where just just uh, I don't have the list in front of me. Where did a did AJ is a did AJ make the list at all? Yeah, he's on the oh. list. He's just way further down. AJ Styles seventy four. Seventy four, man. You want to hear something? Oh, never mind. I thought it said Ultimo Dragon. I was like, what? He retired. No, <laughs> Ultimo Guerrero. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> a freak out. Uh, Big E and, was because he was champion during that time period. Yeah, I mean he didn't get hurt. But he didn't until, have any he didn't get, opponents. He didn't get hurt until right after, like, like kind of. I think what in May, March or no? He it was after WrestleMania, so so it had to be yeah. So it had to be May ish, I think. So that's why Brock Lesnar's never on the before. list is because you have to wrestle thirty matches and he never will. Yeah. He had, so this might be the last year. Okay, yeah, I'll talk about that later. Uh, Big E, his quality of matches still weren't up there because he was champion during that period. He was champion. There wasn't a lot of big stars from Boygian. So it's like, I mean, I agree. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I, I think that Big E was a good champion, but I think that his, you know, he he he, he, he had he's a specific you know type of wrestler, and it's not the type of you know. Uh, it, it's not the type of gaudy, like, overwhelmingly entertaining wrestling. So, it, I mean, but, I mean, that's the, you know, it, I mean, he's still, I mean, he, he still was a good champion, and he was he was definitely a somebody that I believed, you know, could w- could hold the WWE title, you know, without, uh, you know, it just dis- discrediting the, the, you know, the company or, or the, or the, you know the championship itself, so I I, th- I felt like that was still a good, uh, and he he was money in the bank winner, right? He won it from he he got the money in the bank, yeah. cashed in the money in the bank, right? So, um, mm-hmm. and uh, who did he cash it in on? Was it Drew? No, no, he, oh, Drew was it Drew that he cashed in on? It might have been Drew. Yeah, because Drew Drew took it from Drew Brock Lesnar. So then, yeah, Biggie was taking it from Drew. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, yeah. That sounds right. Because then Brock Lesnar came back and won the SmackDown ch- or the SmackDown Championship or the other or the Raw one, one of the two, and then ended up losing it to. Uh, no. It was yeah, Roman Reigns. Was it Brock that lost it to Roman Reigns, or was it? Bray Wyatt. I think Bray Wyatt lost it to Roman Reigns, right? The Fiend? Oh, my bad. But Brock no, Bray, Bray Wyatt lost it to Goldberg. 
Okay. So the, the the match that Roman Reigns had where he came in real late, what was that match? Was that Braun Strowman and Bray, Bray Wyatt? I don't know. I, I don't remember. remember. Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm it's, trying. Been the champion so, it's been the champion so long that it's really hard to tell at this point. Yeah, yeah. He's like, been champion for two years. Yeah. Yeah, two... Two years. Wow. And and I like the fact that like unlike Cena's super long reign where it was the exact same thing every week, the same promo, except for the color of shirt changed, Reigns' personality has changed throughout the whole Let's not uh, talk about Reigns yet. Well we I mean, see where he lands on this list. Here. You can go ahead <laughs> go ahead and say the final five. Alright. The final five I have a problem with number five, first of all. Actually it's number five. We just mentioned we say Bobby Lash is better than all of them. Number four. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Start over. You, 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 you keep cutting. That you keep cutting right in and out. Oh. I was saying number five. Let me make sure I'm coming to the right. Yeah, one on one. Okay. Number five, Bobby Lashley. There you go. Okay, now that's coming through good. Number four. Bobby. Adam Page. I'm just going to repeat you. <laughs> Number three is he who shall no longer be named. <laughs> I believe that's CM Number Punk. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Number two. Okada. Okada. And number one, Tribal Chief. Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman, I think this is going to be the last year he's going to be on the list because he has that Brock Lesnar schedule now for this whole period. And so I don't even think he's going to get his 30, win, 30 matches under. I was so. going to say, I, was like, I don't even think, I was like, I don't know that he wrestled 30 matches. Like, <laughs> so. That's been a question, too. Like, has he, I think he did during that time period. I think the, the new contract was beginning of this year. Also, uh, he's doing a lot of house shows still. Is he? <laughs> Bless you. During that period. Oh, okay. Not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, he's only doing, he's only doing what 128. Uh, it's like 128 or 122 uh, shows a year now. Something like that. That Randy. That's that. Ra- it's that Randy Orton schedule. <laughs> Oh, who's also not on the list? I guess he was out already during this time. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Edge didn't wrestle 30. Adam Page. Ed, Edge didn't wrestle 30 matches. <laughs> Bobby Lashley at five, though. Come on. I Come mean... On. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, the only reason he's there is because he was the world champion and held it for a while. Uh so he he won match. Yeah, I mean, his gimmick and I mean, everything. Yeah, his his stable was decent. I mean, but yeah, I mean, and, and but this this was uh, uh at, way after the stable. The stable was during the uh, the Thunderdome era. Yeah, the and WrestleMania this, before. Yeah, and this was this is after the crowds came back. So this is after yeah, the is that this was during out. the time period whenever uh, it was him versus Lana, or I mean him versus Rusev at the beginning, right before Rusev left, and then oh, you uh, know what? That's who. That's who Big E took the title off. He took it off Bobby Lashley. Oh, he did. Okay. That's right. And did Bobby Lashley take it off of Drew? Yes. Okay. Okay. Bobby took off Drew with the help of the Hurt Business, and then Bobby had that long run, and then Big E cashed in on Lashley. Yeah, because Drew, because Drew won at WrestleMania, right? Or was that uh, two years right. ago that he won? That was two years ago that he won at Wrestle. He won at WrestleMania during the pandemic, so he won at which WrestleMania, was, which would have been right before this takes yeah, place. Like it- because, because uh, we're win was the, the time last, frame like, really with well, people. Well, the time frame we're looking at is from June, from from July first. That would have been right. That would have been two thousand and one, two thousand twenty one, 
which right, was, which 2021, was still, and that was still, the first month the crowds came back. The first month crowds came back? Because uh, WWE started touring again Number- in mid-July of last year. Okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. I remember that now. Okay. Man, it's just been crazy. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Should be back in just a second. I mean, there it goes. All right, y'all are back. Oh, y'all. Uh, I'm just no. looking over the whole thing, and I'm going, "Wow!" Every single guy that's been in WWE on the list has been. I mean, I I really love to poop on Brock Lesnar a lot, but. Brock Lesnar's put over most of the guys on that list, except for maybe Moxley, and they did have a match together. It was just a crud of a match. I mean, it was but a... everybody on the all five hundred people on the list can say they ranked higher than Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure uh, Kenny Omega is going to find some kind of a way to bring up North Carolina. <laughs> Who's uh? <laughs> let's 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 talk for a second. Need a North Carolina. I will say that I don't think Seth. I don't think CM Punk deserves to be on, at least on at least number three. Like, okay, have, for uh, his for his year run, he did deserve the top three spot. Number three is a good spot for him. I mean, why? He he, he had he had the big he had the, the probably one of the biggest debuts. Biggest crowd reaction in a decade or longer. What does that mean? And he did all of his listen, matches listen. have been banger matches. Yeah, but he he year. wrestled nobodies for the first like two months he was there. Oh, he he wrestled uh, main people. Did we have? I mean, look, first, uh, his first match there was with uh, Darby Allen. I mean, no, was, no, it wasn't. It was not. The, Night, his first promo was with Darby. He oh, was well, making people from Yeah, friend. but I mean his his first promo maybe, but not his first match. He his first match was against somebody yeah. named. Who? That's what I'm trying to look up to see how you wrestling match. I wanna say his Which first match was a triple was a three way, right? Uh uh-uh, uh. It was no. him, Darby and Sting? No. He wrestled a bunch of nobodies Dang. to get his ranking up. Before he started wrestling for the like wrestling in the world champions things, because like it was this I whole th- whole thing that he needed to like build up his rep again because he was a nobody, so to sp- or or something even, like that. Even Voldemort had to start somewhere, okay? <laughs> so he suited that shall be nameless. You know what? He hasn't even had thirty matches. So see, there you go. He had 23 matches. I'm just saying. I mean, he they definitely didn't. House, probably not. No. So, I don't know what they mean by they have, they have to have 30 matches. Just saying. So Seth, CM Punk definitely didn't deserve the, at least to be, I mean, he obviously didn't even qualify for the list, but he definitely didn't deserve to be on uh, number three. CM Punk just got crossed off the list. Yeah. All right, so we're moving up a place right fast. So we just added uh, Braun Breaker. You just made the list, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's already point. on the list. He's further down. Okay. Did you guys see the new logo for NXT? Looks Bringing like, it yeah. back to yellow again, or yeah. golden uh, it's white. A, it's the same as the old one, basically. Uh, Only a little. It's slight it's, different. It's, yeah, it's you're different. right. It's slightly different, but it's. it's based. Hey, we've we've we we've been here before. Well, it's just I think they're just reemphasizing to to the world that NXT is a developmental is the developmental and not um, and not its own brand. I think that was something that was in the in the Vince McMahon era was very confusing for for a lot of people. Okay, so you want to hear who everyone CM Punk wrestled? Not really. So his very first match was against Darby Allen. Okay. His second match was against Powerhouse Hobbs. Oh, what's that? Who had the, he uh, didn't uh, have a match with Darby match, 
My bad, my bad. You, you got me, you got me. Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia. That's the match I was thinking Fourth of. match, Matt Seidel, Bobby that Fish, a- Eddie Kingston, QT Marshall, Lee Moriarty, and then he went against the Pinnacle, Warlow, Sean Spears, MJF, FTR, Max Caster, Pinto Oscuro. So yeah, he didn't have any throwaways. I mean, your, your, I think your throw, team. your throwaways are a little bit different than my throwaways. So there, are, there are a couple of people there. I would say QT Marshall's a throwaway match. Uh, I'm like, I don't, I don't. Uh, I don't man. QT Marshall. He, really he, good. QT Marshall's a mid carder. He's not a throwaway. I think, he would be equivalent to. I'm trying to think who he'd be equivalent to in WWE. Um, he'd be equivalent. Like a, he'd be like a mid or rude. Nice. Who? Who? Robert Rude? Bro, he's a tag team part person. He's, he wouldn't be. You can't count like, him. Uh, it wouldn't be Bobby Rude. It'd be like. I don't know. Uh, so, all due respect uh, to Bobby Rude. Let me, let, me, let me specify what I was referring to. People against. Th- these are matches that, 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 that wrestlers who are number three. Like a lot of the wrestlers you named who, who would specify the third best wrestler in the world. Would not be wrestling, like that's what I was trying I to say specify. So if uh, Hangman and Page deserves to be three over Punk because he had yeah no I I, I agree he should be over Punk. Um, I will I I lastly needs to be probably in the teens. Okay, let's look up Bobby Lashley. I can't look at Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley like, just like show up at my door and like beat me in. He has had MMA fights in Biloxi. Like this is scary to me. Well, I don't even want to talk about this man. While you're looking that up, tell me who Mister Irrelevant is. Who's number five hundred? Uh, his name is like Dustin Wilson. <laughs> Who's he yeah, wrestling for? Says Dustin. I don't know. Is he a t- yeah, is he a, I was a busted open radio this morning. Wilson. They interviewed him. Tom Hanks is giving you love, Wilson. <laughs> Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> Whoever number 496 is, Miles Millennium. Way to go for the name. 20 years too late, guy. Jeez. Or, or, my bad, he could be years in the future. <laughs> Let me see. Mr. Earlier I was making joke about Ultimo Dragon, but he is on the list. I thought he was retired. He's 465. I thought he was retired, too. (laughs) Hey, he's on the list. That's funny. Oh, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Cobra Kai, but um, the uh, Judas... A uh, song by Chris Jericho is, yeah. is in it. <laughs> yeah. And for what it's worth, QT Marshall is rated number four forty. <laughs> so, so it's okay to, if you wrestle that guy, you can so, be number three on the list. Got it. <laughs> you know what? I actually have an issue with Roman Reigns being number one the, now. Here, I feel like this might be an inappropriate uh, way to go. Do you like Apollo Cruz, Adam? Do I like him? No, 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 no. I mean, I think he's a fine wrestler. Okay, well, Apollo Cruz is rated number 423, and uh, QT Marshall is 440. I think Apollo Cruz is better than than I mean, QT Marshall. So that, yeah, you know Apollo Cruz is on NXT QT right Marshall now, right? You, you know Apollo uh, Apollo Cruz is on NXT. Shame. You know the developmental league. But, I think uh, Seamus and Monop have similar characteristics. Big, strong dudes that can wrestle. What? Hello. I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to get a WWE counterpart for QT Marshall. I'm still stuck on that. Why? So, What's the point? Check out. So Roman Reigns fought the same over and over again through that whole time period. Yeah, yeah, he, he fought Brock Lesnar. Was that Brock Lesnar or Drew McIntyre? Yeah. <laughs> That's what WWE does. 
that that's jacked up. That's why I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was saying I agree with him being number one, but if you're fighting the same person over and over again, should you be number one? They're the only yeah, people but, they but, that but, WWE but, but, positioned them to. They, the only people that WWE positioned to actually be able to beat him. So that's, but that's, that was Vince McMahon um, booking. And obviously we know yeah. Vince McMahon booking is, has been bad. And since, been, since he's re- retired, um, WWE has had a huge like influx of, of, of it's been a they've been boosted in ratings they've been boosted in in a performance and the the locker room significantly like more upbeat which is causing better matches and uh and in turn i believe that because of this it is also helping aew's ratings because aew is also seeing a pr- pretty big spike in ratings so the theirs is due to the uh news like there's no bad news. Like, there's no such thing as good news, bad news. News is news. And so WWE started getting a spike with the negative Vince McMahon news. And then, you know, him getting replaced and all this stuff happening. So it's attracting the casual viewers. And, the, and AEW had a big influx with their backstage negative news. People are hearing about it and they're out of curiosity tuning in. Well, I think well, I think that's yeah. I think that definitely has a factor too. But I mean, you got to think that the world of wrestling as a whole, you it's, like, it's just going back to like the WWE WCW era. The better those uh, the the better those shows did, the better the shows did as a whole. Like so, like the right. more positive wrestling we get the more it spreads i feel like to to other accessible options man this this is a good product i wonder if this pro- other product of wrestling is just as good it's, is 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 kind of like back and i think forth. they're doing a better job both companies are doing a better job of crossing over the mainstream and attracting lap fans yeah i agree i agree. that that's definitely a factor for, that's definitely what i, I I'm, I'm for that for sure and and then you see, you might see WWE hit 3.0 again after they announce this McMahon's gonna be uh, is probably gonna be put in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I saw that news is spreading like that's interesting time. I would have waited a little more time passed by before doing that. But I am so thrown off by this list. I, the the more I read into this list, I know I'm like looking at people's record like Cody Rhodes. He's only wrestled have, three people since he's been in WWE. They have wrestled, named Matt Jackson as 183 and 184. And then they have uh, Kenji Muto, the where's, great Muto, right? As 176. Where's Matt They Hardy? got Noam Dar as 175. Then Rey Mysterio is 174. Like, what? Where's Matt and Jeff Hardy? Uh, um, they got Jeff Hardy at 160. Okay. Uh, Matt Hardy. I thought I just saw Matt Hardy somewhere. Matt Hardy's at 180. Okay. Yeah, this is horrible. You got, Killer, you got Killer Cross at 161. You got Jeff Hardy one place above him, just so you know. Like, during that time period. Yeah. So, um, going, yeah. Back, going back to that top five, um, uh, of the you know we we did have uh, we do have Bobby Lashley on that top five that we talked about. Um, okay, he, yeah, we'll look up Bobby Lashley. He is gonna have a he is gonna have a U.S. title match with Seth Rollins on Monday night. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited. I'm not excited. It's just I don't hate it, but I don't love it either because I'm not I'm not a huge fan of Bobby Lashley. <laughs> he is stay- yeah, I he mean, is currently listed as the number one face on Raw. The fact that they're and making the title feel relevant. That's what I'm excited about. So you, you know that you know that he's current Bobby Lashley is currently the number one face on Raw, right? Like I know. He's that's, listed that's as the number Cody's one face on Raw. Injured. And once Cody comes back they can try listing him as number one all they want, but it's going to end up being Cody because he gets the biggest reaction. 
Well, it just kind of confuses me why they why they felt like they needed to send Braun and Strowman over to SmackDown when if, if I refuse, I'm not watching Raw anymore while he's on it. Huh? I hate Braun so much. Braun Strowman's on SmackDown. Braun Strowman's on SmackDown. He's not on. Oh, Raw. I thought he was on Raw. Mm-mm. No, no, he, he came up raw, but he's actually moving over to SmackDown. Yeah. Seriously? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. SmackDown's got Braun and they've got um, Solo now. God. Solo. Oh, no. Yep. I'm out. Gosh, man. I hate WWE. You know, to be K- with you. K- <laughs> I think KO is is the second. Um, is number two. To uh, to they Bobby really Lashley. They SmackDown with Braun Strowman. Uh, I don't know. My love for Roman might be <laughs> outweighed by my hatred of Braun. I mean, my love for Roman Reigns might be outweighed by my hatred for Braun Strowman. Good lord. Even when the guy opens his mouth. Um, where was uh, speaking of speaking of uh, I was speaking of we're going back to the list. Where was Sheamus on Sheamus on that list? You said you had mentioned him before. I was just curious because I, I I foresee him being much higher uh, next year because he's uh, he's put on some really great matches these past you know month or two and he uh, he's been uh, he's been winning. Sheamus was one twenty six. One twenty six. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see him being significantly higher next year if he's you know if he continues his, the the way he's been going because. He's been putting on... If you're having a spotlight guy for next year, I'm going to throw one out there as well. Jungle Boy is sitting at number 90. I really project that he's going to have a really big year. He'll be top 20 next year. But who do y'all think, who do you predict right now, based on how it's going, will he be number one next year? Oh. Based on... Based on... Where they were last year, where they're at right now. Just based on where well, they are right now. Well, you know what? Though, they're, they're going to have missed a significant portion, but they're going to have a really big impact once they get in. Because I would think that Cody Rhodes could possibly be number one, but he's just out right now. Yeah, if he fair. comes back and holds the Rumble, has a big match at the next pay-per-view... Wins the title he, at he WrestleMania. Would, he would have missed too much to be number one. I agree. I, I, otherwise, he would definitely be my choice. I, I would, I would, and and that would have been if I, on my thinking, I would have been the same way. I would have gone with Cody Rose if if he if I knew more of an idea of when he'd be back. If he if he do, if he comes yeah. back at the Royal maybe, Rumble, and maybe, he'll, maybe it would be Brian Danielson. I could see him working his way up to number one if he wins this tournament and goes on to. I think for him to be number one, he'd have to a yes, like you said, win the tournament, but then also keep the title for a long period of time before MJF takes it off him. Yeah, that's a tough. Yeah. that's tough. Um, um... And in my world, MJF would chase the title until double or nothing. And have him win it in Long Island or somewhere close to home. Well, I mean, think about it. This next week is Arthur Stadium and the, at their big show. And it's in New York. And so he can cash in his his chip on the winner on Wednesday and become champion immediately. I mean, that would that would be ideal. But I would that'd be the biggest heel move. Yeah. Where is uh where's Kevin Owens on that list? Thirty six, I think. Thirty six. Yeah. And I mean I I feel like he could have been higher on the list, but at the same time, from January until March, he was just running his mouth about Stone Cold Steve Austin and he wasn't really having a lot of matches. Yeah, I think right. that, that was I think, I think that's going to be a big factor in, in all of this is that, you know, we're, we're coming into a new era, so to speak, of, of what we really can't know what to expect in the, in again, even AEW and, and both AEW and, and WWE, we, we, you know, we're, AEW lost, 
you know, their you know two of their top stars basically to the to the suspension and 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 WWE has a completely new creative. So like, you know, we're looking at a very different uh, version of each of these organizations. I mean. Like Bodacia said, I think Cody Rhodes is going to be the one that's going to be the most impactful um, from WWE, but I don't think that impact starts until January. So, uh, I mean, to, to, to I don't think his rise to the top is going to start until WrestleMania. To be honest, after he wins the Royal Rumble, if he comes back to the Royal Rumble, well, that's what I'm saying. January is the Royal Rumble. That's what I was referring to. Is that his? I think his. his uh, and, and you know the. Obviously, in the rumors in the background is they don't. There's a there's been you know huge talks that they don't even they they're not even sure what to do like, um, it, behind the scenes in WWE they they don't they don't want Roman to lose until WrestleMania, yeah. But they don't want him to have both belts, at WrestleMania. Strip him of a belt. So yeah, easy. Like how to strip him well, of a belt or well, create a new belt. Well, that's the thing is that they they're, they're trying to decide what to do. That's the rumor in the back, of course, that, and that, whether that's true or not. But that's what it sounds. That's what I've what I've heard is is they're trying to decide how to take the, his two titles and make it you know make it to where he doesn't have both all the way till WrestleMania. And uh, I think that's a that's a real interesting um, tidbit there as to what what they do uh, from there. And that's why it's so hard to make a decision like that because if they if they don't then are they stupid all they have to do is do a triple threat match and have him outside the ring and somebody else take the fall they don't want they don't want they don't him want to lose, lose at, at, all. at all at all they don't want him to lose at all so that's what i'm saying so the only well, like, avoid him losing is either come up with a storyline you strip him of one of the belts or un, uh, unretire an older belt and make that the new championship for raw yeah yeah I mean, that's... that's... You know what, I just what? Let's look at all of AEW's people in the top 25, shall we? Just for a second. And I'm not going to count the New Japan guys as AEW guys, but you got Punk and Hurt. Let's see who else. Age, but he's been there. All right, let's keep the tabs on this. Uh, should we count Cody Rhodes in that? He was out. Oh, well, yeah. Then that's, that's his uh, AEW run, the reason he's up there so high. All right, but he was. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't include him in either. I wouldn't include him in either. Um, um, All right, so not count him for this. But yeah. Brian Danielson. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he's been there, so I'll put him on this side. So it's one for one so far. Uh, Moxley. He went out, even though I wasn't counting it on that earlier. He was out for a portion, so I'm going to put him over here. And then you got MJF. He decided to leave. He took a little period for himself. Put him over here. Uh, then who else we got? Oh, Kenny Omega. Got hurt. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's been there. there. That's, why, that's why it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm putting him on the been there list. <laughs> I was thinking it was just going to be Paige and, and Punk, or I mean Paige and Jericho, but who else did I put on the was there list? I'm, I got myself confused now. You name everybody that was in AEW during this period, right? I guess my whole point of this was all of their top stars were hurt last year. And they're all hurt right now, mostly. Or gone. Omega, Adam Cole, CM Punk, that was who's will be gone forever. Uh, you, you got Paige that's still there, and then you're moving Moxley up. And MJF is there. Most of your list has been out for a while or is just now coming back. AEW is a lot yeah. of moments. Uh, even with some of those other guys, some of those other guys got the eyeballs on your product and now you're going to push your younger stars. Or at least you better. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to be looking like TNA did at one point when you had a bunch of young talent and then they ended up becoming somebody else's young talent. Uh, um, but as far as WWE, it's looking bright. It's looking bright. Uh, Reigns is on his way. You know, he's been doing it for two years. 
who besides Rhodes do you have that's coming up? Let's look at the list. Let's look at the list. Well, the we have big. I think. Um, I mean, obviously, you have um, you have some of the new guys like uh, Gunther um, has been IC champion for quite some time now. Um, had a you know great Gunther match. Here. Great match with Sheamus. That was a fa- um, um, obviously we've seen some changes. Um, what's that? Um, we've seen some changes with factions like um, Dante. No, Dante. Uh, Damian Priest. Um, he could see he could see main event level soon. Finn Balor is back doing his thing. Um, They're pushing those. But, um, um, let's see. Uh, see <laughs> the demon come back, but like in a different presentation instead of like a cartoony or like really a serious version of the demon with Finn Balor. Judgment Day still feels forced right now, or since they took Edge out of it. Well, I don't. I don't think it feels forced. It's to a degree. I mean, I felt. I think it felt forced before they added Dominic Mysterio. But I don't think it feels forced anymore. I think think I think adding Dominic Mysterio gives it purpose. Like yeah. it didn't it didn't feel important I mean, without. I feel like Dominic Mysterio and um, Rhea Ripley has like this whole different dynamic than the rest. That yeah. almost feels yeah. like a they're more interesting. Weird to say, but I'm not interested in Finn and Damian Priest. And that's weird to say that about both of them. They're the least interesting members of Judgment Day. And that's weird. Yeah, yeah I'm all over TikTok, and I'm telling you, Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley are very popular on TikTok. Like, that angle of the storyline is its own thing, and they need to just go ahead and let them be their own thing. Now, I wish people would quit comparing them to Eddie and um, China completely different element this is like i'm saying i i really feel like this is more of a he's the dominant and he he's the sub um kind of a thing but in in a in a class in a wwe still able to put it on a pg product kind of a way if i if i had to yeah. going back to where we were if i had to say who's going to be number one um i i gotta go with i i, I don't think so i think roman reigns is is likely to be one again next year? No, uh, he won't. Why? Because of the number of days. I mean, that doesn't matter because you're talking about you're talking about the time frame. Look at look at the time frame of what you're doing. We've already gone. It started. It started uh, uh, July first. So we've and already even then, like Roman Reigns, they have far fewer matches between. Look at how many matches he's had since July. 1st. Sorry, yeah, but that doesn't matter. I mean, obviously it's irrelevant because you look at how many Punk matches CM Punk had. You look at how many much how many Punk how many matches saying. Roman Reigns had. Obviously, the amount of matches is irrelevant to how how your effect on the actual industry is. So, so well during the previous period, Roman Reigns had a lot of matches. I don't believe it. No, he had uh, over seventy. He had seventy matches. From Mar- August last year up until okay, wait, to less than seventy because that's up until now. From August last year until this past period, he's had uh, sixty-five matches. And and how many of those were singles matches? Yeah, I don't know. That's a lot of counting. <laughs> I think half of those are singles matches. So he had over thirty single matches. Well, During that time period. even so, in that same regard, if you're looking at his effect on the industry over the last year, compared to where we are now, he's if he's not going to lose the title until uh, right. April. If if, if he but takes since July first, so far he's only had five matches. So what does that mean? Saying I don't think he's going to even hit that thirty mark if he's only had five at this point. Yeah, but that's, on it's TV, only been. It's, only, only, does, like, hey. it's only three months, so if you cross, I mean, it, at, at, on average, that would be equal twenty. So it's not that hard to get ten more matches. Maybe. <laughs> like so, so the 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 thing is, is that if he's not going to lose the title until WrestleMania, 
and let's say he fights The Rock. Tell me how you don't put him number one again. I have Roman Reigns having 50 opponents this past year, or 50 matches, because I just counted them. And that's just from November of last year to current. But are you counting the like the uh, Bloodline matches where he was involved in? Yes. Okay, so he it's fifty matches. Right, so he would have even less single matches. But yes, but yeah, he would have fifty matches he was included in. Let me see. Single matches. Y'all keep talking. I'll just count the single matches. But but basically, if 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 you're asking me who's going to be number one next year, I'm saying it's Roman Reigns. But if I can't say Roman Reigns. That I, twenty-three I, tag matches. So, so that'd be twenty. Under. That'd be twenty-seven singles matches. So, yeah, tw- but that was till November. He had a couple more months because it was from July. Right. This is from November. Yeah, he actually had. Actually, I'm sorry. He had a uh, hundred and two total matches since July last year, up until now. That's a lot of those tag matches. Yeah, because they don't want. They didn't want him to lose. Take take a loss. Yeah, in total, they've got him having 101... Oh, no, that's total in his career. Never mind. I was like, 101 pay-per-view main events. I'm like, what? Mm, I don't know about that one. In the past, <laughs> I was like, in the past 12 months? That's impossible. How many premium events have I missed? <laughs> they've got one going on right now while they're sleeping. Roman Reigns, eye versus his eye. Bodacious, you look like you're in a rocking chair. You keep rocking, you keep going back and forth. You're like a weeble wobble. <laughs> Weebles and wobbles, but they don't fall down, my friend. Uh oh. Where'd he go? John Cena's on set. Oh, jeez. Um. Anyway, if I can't see Roman yeah, Reigns, I think... If it's not going to be Moxley next year, then it's going to be Brian Danielson, right? I think, yeah, I think Brian Danielson is the answer there. I think I think, uh, Brian, I think Brian Danielson is number one if um, if it's not Roman Reigns. Um, if I have to go with a WWE personality, I think KO, I think Kevin Owens is going to be the, uh, uh, the highest WWE personality if... Uh, um, that's not Roman Reigns. I think KO is. Um, I think they're positioning KO in a good in a good way, and I think it starts with Triple H. I think I think the, that uh, that um, I think that that promo he cut on um, on Austin Theory was freaking phenomenal. It was fire! Like just, I loved it. Everything about it was amazing. The Roman, the Roman Reigns had thirty four. Or during the rating period, single matches. Okay. Yeah, I think he'll get up to about that before before next June, the end of June. I think he'll be there. Unless something changes, I, I actually think I think he's gonna, I expect him to wrestle even less. That if I was them, I would be trying to keep him healthy to make sure he makes it healthy to WrestleMania the rest of the Raw. I'd have him do far fewer matches, to be honest with you. Yeah, Take but, no chances with them. Yeah, but I mean that's that's up until WrestleMania. WrestleMania is in April. There's still three months: April, May, June. There's still, you know, three months after that that he, uh, even if he loses the title, that he'll still be around unless he's unless he's just done after that. Unless he's quitting. I mean, I don't think he's quitting, but I think that is going to go down even lower. <laughs> I mean, no one will care about he's him if he's if he. No one will care about him then. Like if he doesn't, if he's not around. It doesn't. Uh, even, I mean, he's trying. He's just he have to have fun, and it looks it looks fun. Like yeah. SummerSlam when Brock's on top of the thing and he throws the bottle down or the microphone down and he just catches it like nothing. <laughs> he's just hitting his stride and he's having fun, and it's it's a joy to watch. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah, Roman Reigns is putting on a great show, but I mean, if he's if he's not going to be around, he's not. I mean, it's it's the same thing about the only reason The Rock is a draw. I good. I feel like 
my opinion is different than yours and maybe even Manosk's, I'm not sure. But I don't think you need the title there. I agree. I don't I'm sure that I don't, nobody, no, everybody box. agrees with you. There's, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't agree with you. <laughs> I think they should strip both titles from them. No, no. I have no. blue to strip from the title is for an inactivity, and then you have champions representing both shows all the time. I don't feel like you need this whole 30 day rule. Like, that, that's passe, as Vince McMahon once said. Uh, I I believe that um, it's the mid card title can be elevated to a world championship feeling. Think Bret Hart versus Davy Boy Smith in London. Yeah. That title, that match felt like it was a world title huge deal. You can have that same feel, especially with them making that United States championship feel like something important. Hey, uh, uh, with them having those. Cl- matches and the classic moments of the title and having the footage and stuff like that like it it's starting to have that classic feel and i feel like cody Rhodes has got a little bit to do with that ever since he came back and he was putting that spotlight on different belts and stuff like that uh so yeah (laughs) hey can you tilt your camera up a little bit you're the top of your head keeps getting like you keep leaning leaning forward so the top of your head's cut off (laughs) i'm reading Okay, now you're good. <laughs> oh, okay, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, well, that, that brings us to the end of our show. Does any... What? He said he got to wrap it up. I said it's brought to you by Magnums. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, this brings us to the end of our I'm show. Sorry, I'm a Trojan uh, man. <laughs> uh, anybody else have anything else to, that they want to get in before we end the show? Uh, Bodacia, she got anything? I mean, we were talking about condoms, and you're talking about getting it in. No, I'm just kidding. Let's let's go. Uh, um, let's see. <laughs> so now, you good? You're muted, I guess. You're muted. Uh, nope. <laughs> All right, Manask, you got anything? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps out a lot. Also, subscribe so you know when our, uh, cha- when our videos get posted. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, y'all have an uh, amazing rest of your week, and we'll catch you next week at the greatest wrestling podcast ever. As always, these are your hosts, Bodacious, Manask, and Adani. (laughs) Y'all have a good one. Bye. Later.